because he's the chief executive in the boat. And another thing that is also very important, why we insisted that we need to know all this, and uh, is that it is important that if any, there are 120,000 boats, uh, you know, in the country uh, or thereabout. In each boat, you want to know who is responsible for each boat, so that in the event that there's any problem, you know who to hold responsible. Because this election, some people must be held responsible for problems that emanate in such places, and people have to go in for it. So it is not as usual, maybe, the identity of the people, if you know. That's why they told policemen in those days to ride their destiny. It is difficult for them to, to accept, Let, uh, you know, speak to this other matter. when they have Co their Concerning form. collation of so, results. So if let, me, let me quickly get your response on this one. Yeah, let me get your response on this. Concerning the collation of results, you're also going to have party agents there. And I like I've also said that. I think they said they will allow uh, media and several other uh, civil society groups, I think if I remember properly, to be present at those collation points, I think that situation room as well. So if it's going to be that transparent, why is there this quiet about it? We know what happens on election days. On election days, these, those are party agents. If you make noise, they will walk you out. They can decide to use the security officials to, to, to walk out uh -huh, and they move with the arrow. That's really, the, the, those are party agents are not as powerful as uh, the laws, you know, permit them to be, especially on election days, because they use raw and naked power. So that's why we want to see in such a way that the process, if you're a police officer, you are in boot 001, and everybody knows that you are the one there, if there's any problem there, you'll be held responsible. In fact, as we have, we have people will be calling you, and they will make sure that uh, you go in for it. So if all those things are, these are extra measures that we think should be put in place to safeguard the process. So we have all already written to the Inter-Party the Inter Advisory Council, have written to the IG for the last two weeks, and we have been waiting for a time. I'm sure if uh, the people in the office of the Inspector General of Police, he should quickly call the Inter-Party Advisory Council, the political parties, to meet so that this issue of uh, uh, posting and deployment of security officials had to be clearly ironed out on a very well agreed guideline. Because if the, those things are not well agreed on, then the process is already compromised. Up to, uh, to that, uh, let me get your views because this largely has to do with the um, uh, recruitment of uh, COs and ROs uh, to that effect of INEC trying to bring in this new innovation which people see as new, but what then do you respond? What will be your own opinion to uh, the situation where people have complained that if INEC was transmitting el uh, election results electronically at the coalition center, then we wouldn't be having this discussion at all. Will you stand with such people who make this kind of declaration? The most important thing that we have insisted, I, we are not against INEC introducing innovation. We are not against their centralizing the process so that there will be, maybe the, 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 the annex chairman will be duly responsible for any, any success or failure of the process. We are not against that. But the thing is that if you have to change a policy, if you have to change a program, middle of the way, all the stakeholders must be fully, fully briefed. I don't know why it is impossible or is difficult for the INEC chairman to interface with, if it's difficult to interface with uh, the, the 91 political parties. That's why we have the Inter-Party Advisory Council, we have executive, we have the national chairman. And if he, if he briefs the chairman today, the whole 91 parties will know. Why is it difficult to brief them on a routine basis on the events as they proceed? So that people will know, because if you know what informed the, 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 this change of policy, you will not be apprehensive. Mm. So the thing is that there has to be continuous... Uh, I expect that from now until the day of election, there has to be a daily, daily brief as to this is the process, this is the step we want to take, and this is what informed why we want to take this step. And everybody will be... I can tell you, everybody is coming from a background of apprehension that this process is not going to be free and fair. So once people are suspicious, 
that this process is not going to be free and fair because of uh, the, the body language of the, people, of the government of the day. The only thing that you can now do is to make sure that each step you take, say, this is what I want to do, this is what informed, you know, the base, why I have to take this decision. Mm -hmm. So that if there's any change in policy, you brief the people. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, if you me, don't also... Me, if sorry, you don't Mr. also, Sinica, you talked about, you know, coming from a place of suspicion. Uh, would you not say that that is also just the nature of politicians in general? It would seem that no matter what INEC does, there will always be that suspicion that the process will not be free and fair. We have seen this over and over again, you know, great suspicion of the electoral body and also of the government of the day. You don't blame, uh, the, you don't blame uh, the political parties or the opposition parties in the sense that if, you, if the, the INEC is an independent body, Mm -hmm. But who appointed them? It's the government of the day. If you are playing a match and the referee was appointed by your opponent, I don't think you'll be playing that ball with your eyes closed. You'll, you'll be fully at alert. You'll be, you'll be suspecting that referee until the game is over. Mm. So that is just, we know that the national commissioners, the INEC chairman, uh, the major principal officers there, are appointees of the government. Mm -hmm. We are very much aware of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, 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 that But there is a the confirmation alone. process. That There's a confirmation process through the Senate so that if these people have... Uh, even, if they are, even if they are confirmed, they know where they come, they know how, how um, you know, the manner and way they, they, you know, they, they were involved. So the most important thing there is that that until there's nothing anybody can do about that until mm -hmm. we amend our constitution mm -hmm. it's a constitutional requirement but we 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 can't also forget that fact that the whole recent electoral commissioners in the 36 states the their major directors and the principal officers at the national but some of this, the, this we is, appointed, some, of, some of these people have been there since the past government. It does not, they were not it, appointed it, 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 by this it government. didn't start with this government. Are and you saying it that will that not, not have also end with this government until the constitution is amended. No, the point I'm making is some of the people in office right now were not appointed by this government. They were appointed by a past government. Yeah, but majority of them, about oh, over 80% of them right, the right the now, have been, even if you have been appointed and you are reappointed, you will know the person who reappointed you. <laughs> so it's not about... So, so it's not about... It's not about uh, so this is, this is just one of the uh, un underlying cause of the suspicion. The, the, so the, this are, we'll let, keep, we'll yes. keep, we'll keep suspecting the Independent National Electoral Commission. Yes. Until, and the only way they can assure us that they are doing the right thing is to make sure that every step they take, they mm -hmm. brief us, mm -hmm. that we are fully informed, we are duly informed, and we are briefed. Once we know what informs the basis of any decision, we will not be here. Like this issue of centralization, you will see the good side of it. Mm -hmm. But there's also a suspicion. The suspicion is that, assuming every other person doesn't know, and somebody behind has a privileged information of knowing the manner and way these people are recruited or reach them earlier than they were made known to the public, it gives the person an advantage. What about reputation? I mean, doesn't reputation count for anything? Mm -hmm. Some people will say that INEC in the past, you know, uh, it would seem that INEC has a continuous improvement process and that it would seem that every election that they have conducted, they have improved over time. Doesn't that count for anything in the elections they are going to conduct? You see, you see, until you have those that have the right attitude about how this thing should be done, if you have a group of people that feel they are in charge and they can do whatever they like, like you listen to some of them, the way they carry on, the way the attitude, if you are doing something for a people, for the good of the people, you should be able to show them. Is that the attitude you have you seen see, from this INEC? You see, but, but the point is, but that's what we're saying. We raised about 10 issues with a guideline. They've not addressed them. And then you're so, so how, how, how is you, how will you get comfortable with it? I say, read section 19 of this. And you'll be very, very worried. Read 11B. You'll understand what we're saying. If you come, if I put in my, uh, my voter's card, uh, my card reader, it shows my base details, I'll be allowed to vote. Mm. If I come to a voting point and I say, oh, my voting card has been used, I will also be allowed to fill a tender box and then I'll be allowed to vote. What does that mean? Mm. So people will come in there and vote and walk away. Mm. So when you do things that are of pleasure and people are saying, these are the issues we have with this. And you carry on like, we don't, we don't matter, we don't, we don't give a damn about what you think, and we just want to conclude the election. 
are you conducting the election for yourself, or for your family, or for the country? Mm. That's, these are the issues. So, for me, yes, we will we'll keep evolving. The system will get better. We, we believe that, but run up to the election we're talking about. There are dangers that this document, okay, the manual they are talking about, we still haven't received it as political parties mm. by now, because this is guideline, and there's supposed to be an election manual. Mr. Okoye, we, we, don't we, have we really have to go now. No I, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> we've run out of time, but okay. we have to thank uh, our guest in the studio, Mr. Jeff Ojinika, is the National Chairman Coalition for Change, and also the Deputy President of the Interpatry uh, Advisory Council. Yeah. I heard you right on that one. And we also had in the studio Mr. Godson Okoye, who is a National Chairman UDP, and also a former presidential candidate. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily. Thank you. Thank you. The program continues shortly. Please stay with us.